Inspired by my recent obsession with Hogwarts Legacy, today we're going to be building a Niffler Nest. Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff, and recently I've been playing a lot of Hogwarts Legacy. I love finding inspiration for my builds from artworks, movies, TV shows and the games that I play, and this seemed like a great opportunity to make an awesome build. So I jumped back into the game and took a few screenshots for reference. And one of the main things that really caught my interest were these Niffler nests scattered around the surroundings of Hogwarts. I thought they'd be a perfect build as they're a piece of nature covered with treasure. So this could be something fun for my players in a D&D game to come across and also it'll look great as a display piece on my shelf. These environments are awesome and have a lot of small details that we can capture in our build. So let's get making. To start, we need a tree to work as the base for this nest. So I use the classic encounter terrain method of twisting up some pipe cleaners into the shape of our tree. Essentially for this, we just grab a pile of pipe cleaners, twist the base up, and then start twisting out our branches, slowly forking them out as we get higher up the tree. I've used this method of making trees a few times in the past, in my growing crystal trees video, as well as my tree end. This comes from Encounter Terrain, and I'd recommend checking out his Instagram if you want to see some other awesome terrain pieces. Once we're finished with the basic shape of the branches, we're going to continue down and do this through the roots, creating a nice natural looking root system, and all in all a nice natural looking epic tree. Once we've got the shape we're happy with, we grab out a lighter and start burning back that fuzz. By running a flame over the pipe cleaners, all that extra fuzz pulls back to be a nice, tight, solid plastic and really gives us a perfect base to start with for our bark. Already we have an awesome skeleton for our tree, but in this particular case I really want to make a more naturalistic looking bark, so I'm going to grab out some milliput. This is a two-part epoxy that when mixed together becomes a really good modelling compound. So once we get it nice and mixed up, I just start applying it all over the trunk of the tree. Making sure to spread it thinly, but also thick enough to carve some more details once we have it all in place. I continue to coat as much of the tree as I can with this first batch of milliput, going up to the base of the branches and then coming in over the top of the roots, before adding in another clump onto the side and carving out the shape of a basic little knot in this tree. Once I'm happy with the overall general shape, I grab my scalpel and start carving some lines into this. This will give me a nice wooden grain running down the tree. I make sure to push this down all the way into the roots, as well as trying to give a few more areas where the knots have a bit more of a shape. Once I'm happy with the texturing of this base, I leave it to dry. While milliput works great for the trunk of our tree as it dries rock solid, I decided to use green stuff for a bit more of the branches and roots, as this has a bit more give once it's dried and has a bit more of a plastic feel. So by putting this further up the branches and on the base of the roots, it'll allow me to continue to reshape these a little bit as I continue into the build. So similarly to the milliput, it's a two part epoxy putty that once mixed together can be applied to our model. Then similarly to the milliput, we just come in with the scalpel and start carving in some textures. Now for this tree I'm going to try something different than I have in the past for the foliage. I'm going to use some polyester wadding. I've used a similar technique as this to make modular garden beds in the past, so I thought why not try it out on this tree. So I pulled off a few pieces of the wadding and test fit it to make sure that I would be making enough. Overall, this stuff sticks together quite nicely and forms a nice base for our tree's leaves. And we'll come back to this later in the build. But in the meantime, let's make a base for this build. I'm going to be using this cheap frame. By using the backing board as our base and cleaning off the actual frame, we'll end up with a nice border to put around our finished piece. So we just need to pull out all of these metal parts and remove anything from the actual frame backing itself this should pull apart quite easily as it's only a cheap product. And now we have a nice MDF base that fits perfectly into this frame. This will work beautifully for our end result. So we'll test out the size of our tree against that MDF board that came out of the back of the frame. And once we have a nice placement, I'll bust out some brown acrylic paint 
and really give a thick coat over the top of the rest of these branches. These branches won't take spray paint too well, so really coating this cheap acrylic craft paint on nice and thick give us a perfect base. And then doing the same for the roots. Now this flat piece of wood isn't quite going to cut it for the base of our model. I want to build this up on a mound of dirt so that we can have a nest underneath the tree. So I'm going to grab some of this cheap packing foam, start breaking it up and running a lighter over the edges to try and pull back some of these bulbous balls to make a bit more of a natural shape. Ultimately this wasn't really necessary as the entire thing got covered up anyway, but I thought I may as well show you guys the steps that I did as I went along. So I just kept stacking this up until I had a nice base that I was happy with that left us with a good amount of room underneath the tree to create our nest. Once I had them all in place, I grabbed out the hot glue gun and started sticking them down. It really didn't matter if they were exactly the same way as the original plan as there was a lot more to go on top of this that eventually the tree could fit into. Also, because this is just a cheap material, I can always break it away as I build up. Once I had a good base for my mound of dirt, I mixed up some DIY sculptor mold with some glue and water. To start, I mixed in way too much water, but I took advantage of this and just dunked a few pieces of paper towel into the heavy moisture so that it would work kind of like a paper mache. I draped this over the entire build to help fill in any gaps before we'd come in with our final sculptor mold. Once I was happy with the basic shape of this, I added some more sculptor mold to the mix to thicken it up, gave the whole thing a stir and started adding it to my build. Really just piling it on over the entire base. I really wanted this to look nice and natural so I didn't want any of that flat earth remaining on the bottom. This stuff is perfect because once I had the basic shape that I liked, I could just press the tree down on top and start shoving some more sculptor mold into any of the gaps. Once I was happy with this, I added a layer of small rocks and dirt onto the top and pressed them in. This helps to add a little bit of extra texture, even though most of this will get covered up. The more layers we can have on the final piece of build helps give it a nice naturalistic look. Once I was happy with this, I left it to dry overnight. And this came out perfectly, holding the tree in place. And now that it was all dried and together, it was time to give the entire thing a prime in a grey spray paint. This is a cheap grey primer that I get from my local hardware store, and it does a great job of sticking to just about everything. I love this stuff because it's quite affordable, and it's one of the few matte spray paints that I've been able to find. So it works as a perfect base for almost all of my builds. Once my grey primer was dried, I came in with a Wraithbone wipe over all of the wooden textures, and then used a brown spray paint to hit the upper branches as these are going to be covered in foliage anyway and I didn't want to waste any paint on them. I then took this inside once dry and started to apply a Gore Grunter fur. I love the way that this looks on the Wraithbone white for wooden textures, especially with these kinds of details that I've carved into this build. So I coat the entire trunk of the tree as well as the roots in this Gore Grunter fur and then leave most of the upper branches as they are, maybe touching up a few areas where the white paint is still remaining. Again, these upper branches are gonna be covered with foliage, so while they're not too big of a deal, I really did wanna focus on making sure that all of the roots had this nice, same brown base running all the way down into the ground. Once I was happy with the roots, I grabbed out some of these plaster rocks. I'd made these using Woodland Scenics rock molds in the past and I've used them on several of my old videos. I hot glued these all over the build to give us a bit of a rock base in the earth which would be a reason that this dirt mound hadn't washed away. I like the idea of these sticking out of the build to give us another bit of natural variation in our model base. Now to help blend everything in place it was time to start using some texture paints. I accidentally forgot to record my first bit of applying that Tamiya light brown, but remembered to turn the camera back on whilst I was applying this grey mud texture. This stuff's great because you can really cake it on, and this can help to fill in any gaps that the original sculptor mold or modelling putty 
had left in the drying process. It also helps around the edges of these rocks to blend them all into the build. I go back and forth between this and the Tamiya brown texture to give us a nice earthen effect, but continue to fill in any gaps around the rocks or the roots with that grey mud. And now I'm going to come in with a Space Wolves grey. I love this to base my rocks, especially with these plaster moulds, it really soaks in in a satisfying way. I've used this in a lot of my previous builds, and you'll see how adding some highlights to this later on really brings this stone to life. Now that all that grey mud's had a chance to dry, I'm going to come in with another layer of that Tamiya soil effect to blend everything together and cover up all of that grey mess. Also allowing a little bit of this to run over top of the rocks to make it look like they're buried in the soil. Once this has had a chance to dry, we take the whole thing outside and hit it with a brown wash. This is a DIY wash that I've thrown together and shown in a lot of my previous videos and it will just help to blend all of these different colours together and really soak into any of the gaps that I might have missed so that we don't have any obvious sections that just don't seem to blend into the natural environment. Once the entire thing's had a healthy coat, we'll dab it down with a piece of toilet paper and leave it to dry. Then bringing it back inside and running another layer of this soil effect over top, a bit more like a dry brush this time, and just pulling out any of the highlights. This stuff dries with an awesome matte finished effect that I just love for any kind of dirt base. And now we've got a nice natural looking base, we're going to come in with some dry brushing to add some highlights back into these stones. We're going to start with an Administratum Grey. This is a nice grey to use as a dry brush over all of the rocks to give them their first layer of highlights. Once we're done with this, we'll move on to Tau Light Ochre on all of the timber effects. If you've seen any of my previous builds with wooden effects, you know that I love to apply this as a highlight over any kind of wood. I think that it really brings the wooden textures to life. And then we're going to move back over to the stones with a brighter grey, this time from the Vallejo range using their grey surface primer. This is a really bright grey and I just think it brings these stones to life in an even more naturalistic way, allowing for a nice blue base but that really stone grey highlight. And now for the fun and messy part we're gonna be adding in our golden coins. So we coat all the areas that we think they will have amassed with a matte Mod Podge, and then start adding in some fine gold glitter. I start with gold, and then come in with a little bit of silver to add a bit of variation, before coming in with another heavy load of gold. Anyone that's worked with glitter will know that this stuff is messy. So I've put down a sheet of paper to try and catch as much as possible, whilst also continually busting out the vacuum cleaner to collect anything that goes astray. This however didn't stop pieces of glitter from appearing on my body or around the house for the next few days. So if you weren't aware already, be very careful while working with this material. I continued this same process over the rest of the build, piling it on wherever I thought that the gold would have collected. So up against the roots and especially hidden in behind all of the stones. I imagine that the Nifflers are tucking this away to try and impress a mate, similar to a lot of creatures in the real world that like to beautify their nests. Once I was done with the first layer, I came in and really pushed that glue underneath the roots, as I wanted it to look like the Nifflers had been shoving gold in underneath this tree to hold it all in place. So I continued around all of the roots and the nooks and crannies of this build with a healthy amount of glue then coming back in and coating this in all of the extra glitter that hadn't stuck down the first time. If we go back to our original reference images, it's not just coins that these nifflers have been hoarding away, so I'll print out a whole heap of tiny bits and pieces on my resin printer. Once I've given these guys a quick prime and a paint, we'll end up with a nice healthy amount of extra treasures to add to our pile. Most of these are available from my mini factory and a few of them come from Thingiverse. And if you want to print them yourself, I'll have all the links in the description. Now that they're ready to go, I'll bust out the super glue and start adding a whole heap of these tiny little details all over our base.
these gold coins look like the piles of plates that we see stacked up around the Niffler nests in the game, so they'll work perfectly on this build. Additionally, a whole heap of mugs, chalices, cups, and other random bits and pieces will be glued down all over the build to give us some nice visual variation while we look at our treasure piles. Basically anything shiny, these nifflers would have hoarded to beautify their nests and attract a mate. So we'll just keep sticking them down all over the place wherever there's an extra space available. Since we know that these guys just love anything shiny, I grabbed out this rainbow hermatite. This is a naturally forming crystal in the real world that I happen to have a heap of broken down bits and pieces that I picked up from a market one day. This stuff is great in these kinds of builds as it has a super rainbow reflective natural magic look that I thought would fit perfectly amongst these treasure hordes. So I busted out the super glue and started sticking down a whole heap of tiny bits and pieces. A lot of these sticking out the top of pots and cups to make it look like they'd been shoved in there as a little something extra. Now that we've spent a whole lot of time building up the treasure, let's make the foliage for the tree. I'll take that polyester wadding that I tore apart earlier and hit it with a grey primer. This just helps to make sure that it takes all of the paint before coming in again with a series of different spray paints. We'll start with a super bright green as our base and then come in with a darker green and brown to sort of dapple a different kind of effect over the entire thing, giving us a whole heap of different variations of colour throughout our build. While this sits out in the sun to dry, I'm going to start mixing up some flocking. I'm going to use a couple of different types of flocking and mix them together so we have a bit of variation on our overall foliage look. Now that we have our foam flocks mixed up, we're going to grab out a quick grip adhesive glue and start spraying this over top of the polyester wadding. Once this has had a chance to turn a little bit tacky, we will bring these inside and dunk them into our foam flock. This will collect a good amount of the foam flocking and give us that nice natural look that we want for the top of our tree. Now we can start adding some hot glue onto the ends of our branches. Once we have a decent amount of glue onto our branches, we'll just start wadding these foliage pieces over top. They'll all stick together quite nicely. The hot glue helps, but this polyester filling tends to stick to itself quite well anyway. So we'll continue this over the entire top of the build, going through each of these separate branch areas and sticking the polyester wadding down while pinching it together to give it a more rounded off look. Slowly building out the top of our tree's foliage. Whilst I could have probably done one big piece to drape over the entire thing, I really like the idea of having each of these separate branches holding up their own chunks of leaves, more like a real tree. And ultimately, I think the end result speaks for itself. I was very happy with this and I'm probably going to do some more trees like this in the future. And since we're working on the greenery, it's time to bust out the grass tufts. You guys know that I like to go wild with these and this build is going to be no different. So anywhere that there isn't already gold on this base, I'm going to start covering in variations of grass. By having a few different types of these, it really does help add a more naturalistic look rather than there being just the one type. Once I am happy with all of these, however, I will be coming in with some more mosses and grasses. So we're going to be using that matte mod podge that we used earlier to stick down all of the gold and running this over all of the edges where there is no gold. I really want this to be able to blend into other grass mats if I want to use it as a piece of terrain. So I'm going to go over all of these edges with some static grass. I could be using a static grass applicator, but since I'm doing such small areas, I just did this by hand. Then coming in and pouring in a good amount of foam flock over top of all this to sink into all of the gaps that I'd missed. Again, more variation helps to make these areas look much more natural. I was just about ready to call this build done when I realized I hadn't added in any of my signature tiny bits and pieces. So we added in a few frogs, 
a toad, and a handful of mushrooms. These tiny little extra details just bring more life to the build and help make sure that wherever you look, no matter how many times you've looked at this build, you'll always see something different. These models are available for free on Thingiverse for any of you out there that have a 3D printer and want to add that little bit of something extra to your terrain builds. And with that, I have my first Harry Potter themed build done. The Niffler Nest was a lot of fun to build, despite being a little bit messy with all that glitter. Overall, it's going to be an awesome piece of terrain on my table. And once we put it inside that original photo frame, it's going to look beautiful sitting on the shelf as well. And now to finish this off, we needed one last detail, and that was a few Nifflers to sit around the nest. So I printed these off with my 3D printer using a free design available on Thingiverse and gave them a quick paint. And now that the build's done, it's time to reveal the final build. Revelio. Our Niffler nest is looking beautiful. With our little critters running around their treasure hoard and all these tiny little extra bits and pieces of detail, no matter how many times you look at this build, you'll always find something new to focus on. I had a lot of fun making this piece with all of these extra bits and pieces of treasure in a different kind of build than anything I've made in the past. Yet still coming back and using all of those tiny bits and pieces and the nice natural look that I love for any terrain piece. Something different to any of my other builds is that photo frame base. I love this as a border and it's really come together nicely as a display piece. I'm also really happy with the end results for this tree, giving me some new ways to come at trees in future builds, as well as the possibility of making a few of these just to sit on my tabletop. I hope you guys have found some inspiration from this build, and even if you're not a big fan of Hogwarts Legacy and the Harry Potter universe, I feel like this could be a really cool piece for a green dragon wormling. A nice little dragon's hoard tucked away in a nest underneath a giant tree hidden away in a forest somewhere. Alternatively, you could just add any creature you like, and it just gives your players a chance to come across a nice enriching hoard. But for now, this is going to find a place on my shelf. I'd love to see you as a new subscriber to the channel, and as always, never stop making stuff.